Um, good afternoon, everyone. Can you all hear me okay? Good. By your response, I presume you, you just had lunch. You can take a small nap. Um, feel free. You know, I know how tiring it can be to listen to these uh, presentations. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for taking the time being, of being here. Um, we're Visionaries 777. We, we are based out of Hong Kong. Um, we started the business five years ago. We'll briefly introduce each other. Uh, I come from a business background and architectural, media architecture, uh, interaction design uh, with lighting. Um, and I've lived in Hong Kong for 14 years. And my business partner is Franz. Yeah, so my name is Franz. And uh, basically, I used to uh, work at Lego before 10 years ago, bridging the physical and digital with AR. And then uh, moved to Hong Kong, created Visionary 777 with my other business partner, Nicolas, which is not here today because he's having a baby. Congratulations to him. And we're going to show you uh, different things. So how we accelerated the uh, disruption in the automotive industry with a couple of projects showcased that we did in the past. So our slogan has been anticipating the future um, because this is what Nico and Franz were doing inside Lego. Uh, they were really pioneers in the whole augmented reality topic. Uh, they started, the first patent was done in 2009. Nine. Yeah. So a long, long time ago with Lego. Um, we were quite fortunate when we started the business, we pitched the idea to Lego and uh, they, uh, you know, they were our first customer uh, as soon as we started. And as Nick Franz was saying, we, we've kept Lego over the years. We still do R&D for them, any, anything to do with AR, VR, and MR. And so we basically have an agreement with them where we cannot work with any other toy company in the world, which we don't need to because Lego is probably the most amazing company in the planet. Um, but any, um, any kind of R&D that we do, we can then use for other type of industries. And we'll show you some of these examples. So, what we've been building over the years is what we call uh, an ecosystem. Um, our target is to influence the customer uh, life cycle um, or, and product, or, sorry, customer journey and product life cycle. We are very keen on figuring out what is the place of AR, VR, and MR within this ecosystem. Um, so if you can think of it this way, how can people who design a vehicle can use this kind of tools. The guys who are manufacturing the vehicle in the factories, how can they use these tools you know, to do maintenance in the machine? The people who are then using um, the, the vehicle images or 3D assets to create all the marketing material. Once a person purchases the vehicle, can we use these 3D assets and, and technologies to have people do maintenance themselves through augmented reality, um, multiple things after sales. So that's what we've been doing over the years and we'll show you uh, a few examples on this topic. Um, we've been quite fortunate, even though we're based out of Hong Kong, um, we have had the pleasure of, and, and the you know, fortune, luck of working with global leaders, um, such as, as the ones that you can see here. So pretty much all of our customers are outside Hong Kong, except for Infinity, that belongs to the Nissan Renault Alliance and their headquarters in Hong Kong. So we really only work with the headquarters of all these companies, not only the company, the car manufacturers, but also the tier one and tier two suppliers to the automotive industry. Um, so this was our first uh, customer three years ago. Um, if you guys are a fan of you know, watching films, uh, this was in the Fast and, Fast and Furious. Furious seven. Seven, which I've never seen. Um, so there was the Lycan from W Motors. Um, it's a 3.5 million US dollar vehicle. Uh, three years ago, you know, we couldn't really approach any other big brands, so we just went for this hyper luxury brand in Dubai. Um, they really liked what we were doing, and three years ago, they granted us our wish of allowing us to do the first configurator for them. Um, and maybe Franz can explain what we did in detail. Yeah, so um, as you can see, like uh, cars are still sold with traditional uh, marketing materials, and especially that one 3.5 million US dollar car sold with uh, uh, basically uh, paper brochures showing you the different customization possible. This car is actually highly customizable. You can uh, change the, you can choose the color of the body paint, the calipers, the rims, the carbon fiber, the stitching, and so on. And uh, what we did is, here is to create uh, an interactive 3D real-time configurator that runs on a, a mobile tablet, so uh, typically an iPad, uh, iPad Pro. 
And we really uh, put a lot of efforts to optimize the 3D asset so that it can run smoothly uh, on uh, such devices and also deliver uh, a really uh, realistic quality. That was back in 2016. Um, and uh, yeah, so we had to basically uh, come up with a, a benchmark of what could be the weight of these 3D assets. We, here, the, the car is about uh, half a million triangles. Uh, we mm -hmm. have uh, baked uh, uh, ambient occlusion maps. We have tileable textures. We created two, U two UV sets uh, so that we can have tileable textures and uh, unwrapped uh, AO maps. Uh, we, as you can see, we replicated all the options you can find in a brochure. So you can basically customize every single aspect of a car and also explore it from inside out, open the trunk, the, the, the hood, uh, the doors, etc., and change sceneries. So after that, um, uh, W Motors did a joint venture with a company called Iconic from uh, China. They do um, luxury multi-purpose vehicles. Uh, they're the first ones, electric for, uh, uh, MV, MPV um, in China. So these are basically, these cars are used with just a driver. At the back, you have very comfortable seats, very popular in China. Um, and so our job was to blend both brands through a virtual showroom. We launched it in China. Um, we basically grabbed the newest vehicle from W Motors, the Fenir, and their old vehicle, the Lycan, and their two new iconic vehicles. Uh, and the VR experience, maybe France again, yeah. can tell you what we did. So yeah, so here, as you can see, we have uh, four cars available. We have the Lycan iCrossport, the Fenir Super Sport, and the two uh, iconic seven VIP and premium. And uh, all this running in HTC Vive, so we had to also uh, come up with um, uh, um, a level of detail that is acceptable and running smoothly with four cars on the screen uh, where you can go inside and outside. You can, again, um, uh, navigate uh, intuitively around the cars and customize all the different aspects. Here it was really relevant because actually on the show, no one could get in the cars. Those cars were really premium and uh, only VIP customers could actually visit the interior of the car. So that was the way uh, for anyone to, uh, to actually experience it from inside out. And so, of course, one of the great things and the reason why we love working with Unity and it's the, the main uh, software that we use all the time is because of the flexibility of, of Unity, uh, that we can have the, the 3D assets then used for multiple purposes, whether it's with a, an app on, a, on an iPhone or an iPad, VR experience, or as Francis is gonna show you next, what we did when we released the AR Kit function. So basically, um, a week after the AR Kit was launched, we already released this uh, with W Motors. We're quite fortunate that these brands really believe in what we do, and so they give us budget to do R&D and, and a lot of experimentation. And so we're quite fortunate. We are always looking for the newest technologies when it comes to hardware, and as soon as it's ready, we deploy it for our customers, regardless of, of what industry they're in. So yeah, as you can see here, we can use AR Kit and park the car in the street uh, to one-to-one -to -one scale. We also uh, experimented a bit with uh, capturing the ambient uh, lighting and reflections uh, of the surrounding to give uh, a, a more realistic lighting of the car. Um, and then again, yeah, it was our first attempt with AR Kit to integrate it. And once again, Unity was really great uh, to work with because in like a, a few days playing with AR Kit, we could easily integrate it in our existing app uh, that was on the App Store, and uh, we had this basically at the launch of, uh, of AirKit. And the latest development we've done and showcased is also in, in partly thanks to Vini and Aliana from PTC who are here with Vuforia. So Vuforia, of course, is an amazing software. They're also pioneers in this kind of technologies, and this is something that we proposed to the team from Lycan, from W Motors, you know, could we come up with a concept where people could uh, visualize all the configuration, the possible configurations in, in terms of color without having to go through just the digital version? Um, and yeah, I think France is always very good at explaining exactly how we did it. So, so yeah, so here we were part of the uh, Vuforia early access program. So we had access to the uh, latest model target tracking. And here, as you can see, we can uh, detect the car with a simple uh, uh, mobile phone, smartphone, and we can alter the color of the car dynamically and even paste some vinyls around the car. So this, uh, we created a special shader that blends with the actual car, so we are not 
completely masking the product. We are really blending a new paint with the actual existing paint of the car. And as you can see, the illusion is quite good. Uh, when you move around the car, all the vinyls stay in place and have the shadows, the real shadows and reflection of the car. So it really gives a realistic look. And you can really see the potential of having that in the future. It's quite stable. You can walk around the car in all 360 angles. Uh, and yeah, you can just have fun and customize it in all sorts of ways. Um, yeah. Um, we, we included this slide as soon as we knew that our BMW customers were going to come in to the conference. Dylan and Peter back there, we want to stalk them later. Um, so we, this is a project, I'm just kidding, very good project. Uh, but it was a very interesting project uh, because with BMW, they wanted to figure out what was the future of digital, especially in showrooms. Um, so we had been working on a project called the Vision Gate. And the Vision Gate was, um, the concept was, princip was in, in principle, can we bring the products to life before they are in the showrooms? Um, and the project is quite extensive. It's been launched in multiple countries around the world. The idea is that five or six months before the car is in the showroom, we can start showcasing what this car looks like, not only physically, but also what is the technology inside the vehicle. And many of these dealers, of course, they are not very keen on spending huge amounts of money in terms of um, the hardware resources. And so we're always trying to figure out, you know, is it an iPad and a Samsung VR headgear that, that could be the entry point that they could spend to have a, an interactive experience? So in this case, we did use the Samsung VR headgear. We tried to make it as realistic as possible, uh, but that meant that anyone could just buy this downstairs and they had access to a VR experience. Uh, yeah, maybe friends can so, take yeah, it. So yeah, so here, we, uh, we, had, we were really constrained by the capabilities of uh, Samsung Gear VR. So we had to, again, come up with uh, a way of visualizing uh, the interior of the car in the most realistic way we could do. Um, so uh, I don't know if you can notice, but actually when the car moves and turns, like we have uh, dynamic lighting and reflections. So it, this is not actually a video playing. We only have a, a 4K uh, 360 video for the, the city environment but the car is actually a combination of different channels of uh, 360 images, which gives us access to, uh, to dynamically uh, change the reflection on, on the reflective parts, the lighting as well. Uh, we can even go to um, a night mode to, uh, to see the interior uh, ambient lighting of BMW. So um, you will see in a second afterwards. So we have different hotspots around the car that you can learn the different features of the, the interior uh, features. Yeah, let's just move yeah. on. We'll show yeah. it to them later. Yeah, we'll, we'll send you the videos if you guys want to look at them. Um, so Osram. Uh, Osram is a tier one supplier or tier two supplier to the automotive industry. Um, they make these little things. Um, semiconductor components are used for LiDAR technology, infrared, they're very tiny technologies that are very important for autonomous driving vehicles, hand gesture, and multiple things. Um, so this is the traditional marketing that they've been using. So when they would approach companies like BMW, companies like Tesla, this is what they would be using. And so when we approached them, we asked them, you know, if you guys are a technology company, maybe it's worth um, speaking a different language when you approach your customers. And so our solution was to sit down with the engineers responsible for each one of these components and create a sales tool that would explain the application of, of the components, basically what the component did instead of just showing a, a, a boring technical spec sheet. And the solution was basically an app where we, uh, for every component, once again, we created an animation during the meetings. So let's say Tesla is now meeting uh, with um, Osram is meeting Tesla. Um, they could, during the meeting, send the technical specification details um, just uh, via, via email, and they could create an access account so the engineer could also download the app. Um, and maybe Franz can explain to you what we did technically yeah. here. So here, as you can see, uh, we developed uh, uh, an iPad application where you can see the car with all the different applications around the car. So here, if I select uh, headlights, uh, I can dive into the scenario of the headlights and learn about adaptive front lighting. So what is adaptive front lighting? Basically, it adapts to different road environments. So here we are in a city. 
Uh, and uh, basically, it's a step-by-step -step scenario that explains you all the benefits. So here, when you go to a crossroad, it's going to activate cornering lighting. And at any point of time, you can dive it into the, uh, the headlamp block and uh, open it uh, and dive into the uh, component level of uh, OSRAM. So these components are like few millimeters, really hard to visualize and understand. And here we can display all the technical specifications, but more importantly, the applications on the road uh, of this vehicle. And, 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 and so bear in mind that this kind of product is only used by maybe 27 salespeople within the organization. So this is not a public app. This is an app that we create, we develop, we host, we do the maintenance for this app. Um, but these 27 or 28 people, they bring around uh, maybe 800, 700 million euro revenue into the organization. So it's a very important tool for them. And that's where we think that we are trying to, um, uh, we're trying to push the limits in the automotive industry, not just with the guys who are very visible, like the BMWs of the world or the Daimlers, but more about the, the other companies that are in the ecosystem, like tier one and tier two suppliers, which are equally important in the, in the whole um, industry. Yeah, and here we also were, like on the technical side, we basically created uh, asset bundles that we hosted on the cloud so that we can uh, easily update each component and specifications if we need to, uh, rather than doing a full update of the application. Um, so Infinity is a great example. Um, they are a, a much smaller brand from the parent brands, the Nissan Renault um, Alliance, um, which also allows us to be more, uh, more experimental with the things that they have been doing. Um, and so the first job that we did was the most important launch of the Histories brands was the QX50 here in LA. Uh, there were multiple um, projects that we did for this, which France will go through them. But the most important thing is that we managed for the first time to modularize the software so that it could be used for multiple purposes um, at different stages. And you will see how one project became multiple kind of micro projects being used worldwide by different stakeholders in the industry, the brand themselves, the dealers and the distributors, and, um, and somebody else who, which I forgot right now. Anyway, let's go through the video. So here, as you can see, we created the first exhibit was uh, a screen on a sliding rail on a 80, uh, 120 degree. And the screen is actually displaying the real image of the car. So there's a camera behind that films the car. And we uh, overlay um, the digital content, blend it with the car to create a, an X-ray illusion. So here we can show uh, in place the, uh, the, the boot of the car with the, the stroller that it can fit inside. Uh, we can show the steel structure with the different robustness of steel at different parts. Uh, we can show the engine, the new VC Turbo engine, through the hood of the car. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so each, basically, angle of, uh, around the car is showing a different part, different aspect of this new VC Turbo platform, uh, part of the new uh, QX50. Then uh, the second exhibit, we uh, here explained the ProPilot technologies. So uh, ProPilot technologies from Nissan. Um, that are inside the Infinity cars and could be a little bit difficult or uh, difficult to understand for non-engineer, non-technical uh, uh, customers. So here, intelligent all-wheel drive, what does it mean on the road uh, when, the, when the, the conditions are bad, what is predictive for what collision warning, all these things. And here we bring basically to life the clay model. So we, uh, again, we film uh, the car and then we merge uh, digital to create an augmented reality illusion and we contextualize uh, to different scenarios so that you can intuitively understand each piece of technologies. And the third one was focused on the design uh, aspect of the car. So here it was a, a highly realistic configurator running on the 4K screen and users were interacting it uh, through a remote iPad that you can see on the table. So you can use it as a touchpad to open the doors, etc. But moreover, you can interact with the physical samples. So when you take the red car paint and you place it on the iPad, basically it's going to dynamically change the paint on the screen. So there is a nice relationship of uh, physical and digital because um, customers, they like to feel things. You know, the leather is very important to feel the texture. So you cannot get away with this when it's digital. And same for the paint. You want to see how it looks like in real light. 
uh, and then you can see the result in, in the screen. So this was also very playful and interactive for people. And um, yeah. And with the approach that we've always had with our customers is to really think of scalability um, and easy deployability. So when we developed the, the main project, we developed it in such a, in such a way that we could then replicate it. Um, as you can see, it was widely used very much. Uh, they, didn't need, they didn't need technical support because it was very straightforward, the, the installation in many cases. Um, and, and this is definitely one, once again, the strength of Unity, that it can be as complex or as, as simple as you want to make it, but it definitely serves its purpose, its purpose really well. And so we approached Infinity once again, and we said, you know, you clearly have a need for these kind of technologies, but your dealers and the people who are doing the sales on the ground worldwide will not be able to afford such physical installations. What we could do is dilute a bit the complexity in terms of hardware without removing the software experience. Um, and so we, we, we had a, a few different experiences. So for example, here, this is one, the one that Franz just showed you where you have the 4K screen, um, but in, in, in another case, we could just connect the iPads. In another case, it could just be the whole uh, configurator in just an iPad without having to have the whole computer attached to it. Um, and here are a few examples of how we simplified everything to make sure that it worked on an iPad um, as well. Yeah, so exactly. So the idea here is like uh, also sometimes, you know, like the, the, the OEMs, they don't really have a technical knowledge of uh, how complex it is. You, you've done it for a 4K screen with an Alienware computer. Now, can you copy paste the software to an iPad? The answer is not that simple. Uh, so there's a lot of optimizations that needs to be done. Uh, which is uh, fortunately uh, quite uh, easy to do with Unity. Um, so here you can see we are very close to the quality that we had on the 4K screen, but running on an iPad Pro. Uh, so we did like a, a few optimizations here and there uh, so that to make sure that uh, those shaders are optimized for mobile. Uh, we got rid of uh, unwrapped uh, ambient occlusion uh, textures, but we did baked vertex AO instead, so we can save a lot of texture space, and we end up with only one UV set instead of having two, so this makes the 3D uh, asset creation much easier. Uh, the cars are also modular because we have different um, trims, uh, different models of the car, so sometimes they have the sunroof, sometimes they don't. So we don't have one car per configuration. That would take too much uh, space. We have one e FBX per thing. So instead we have like basically an Excel sheet with all the different parts that are activated or not depending on the, on the configuration. And uh, yes, you can see we have highlights, we have like traveling shots, dolly shots around the car, uh, and so on. Um, yeah, the next example, uh, we approached um, Buforia as, and we got access very early to the model targets. And this was a great example of how we could use that kind of technology. So what we did was, oh, it's not showing here. So what we did was um, we had the product uh, in the showrooms, this small car model in the showrooms before the physical car was there. And what we did was we reused the content that we had had, the 3D assets that we had used on digital uh, solutions previously to do the model tracking. So we could display all the technology uh, that is sometimes invisible within the, within the uh, car model. Yes, yeah, so as you can see here, we can detect the car fairly, if I don't fall over, fairly uh, accurately. And the lighting is really not that great, to be honest. There's a lot of shadows, there's a lot of reflections, like the, the car is like uh, pretty lit up uh, at some areas, like there's like huge shadow here, but as you can still see it's quite robust, so it detects the car quite well and it can really go far away from it. Um, and yeah, so basically we transposed again the sliding screen experience. That was a challenge, but uh, thanks to uh, the capabilities of the model target from Unity, from Vuforia, then it was fairly easy to, to replicate the same experience. So uh, yeah, and then at any point of time, you can take out the different things uh, and get a closer look of it. Yeah, so this kind of tools is very important. And as you, as you can see here, we can, um, basically, it works on a small model, but uh, in this video, uh, yeah, in this video, basically, it also works on the one-to-one -one scale car. So, 
The scale doesn't really matter. Uh, you just need to prepare the uh, model targets accordingly um, with the correct scale. But it's great because uh, you can have a small uh, experience transportable, but you can also have it uh, on the real car. So here, the dealers, they uh, end up with a tool to accompany the customer uh, when they visit the showroom. And it's, this is much more powerful and attractive than coming to the customer with a paper brochure. Here, you have something much cooler. It's ice breaking, uh, it's, uh, it's new, it's, uh, it's, it's astonishing, and you can learn a lot about all the different features of the car in the dealership. And this is just the beginning. Many of the things that we cannot show, unfortunately, but they will be used widely in the industry, is how are these tools going to be used, for example, to do maintenance on a machine? Um, what is that industry side going to look like? So right now we're looking very much at the marketing side, but this will definitely revolutionize the way that we approach many of the day-to-day -day tasks that we do, for example, in a factory floor. Uh, and this is very exciting for us. And yeah, eventually we'll be able to show you guys. Right now it's still very, very R&D driven. Um, yeah, the next example is all yours, friends. Yeah, so um, basically, as you know, uh, Unity HDRP came out uh, quite recently. And we, uh, as soon as it was available, we, we uh, get our hands on it. And uh, we were basically trying to evolve our existing car configurator that you have seen before with this new uh, render pipeline. And um, with a little bit of help from uh, Unity Japan, Alex Hughes, uh, who gave us like, some tips uh, and tricks, Alex? We, we, yeah, um, yes. <laughs> we managed to, uh, with a fairly short amount of time, get something that is really, uh, from our point of view, looking quite good and uh, highly realistic. Um, and uh, it's a huge comparison with uh, what we had before. It's a huge improvement, and it's really important for the customer because they're always trying to like they, they compare with what they have seen on the market uh, with uh, videos they can see on YouTube made with other softwares. And now with uh, Unity SGRP, we can really bring uh, a level of realism which is uh, really astonishing. So here you can see the quality of the leather interior. Uh, it's like um, it's really starting to compete with uh, pre-rendered CGI images. Uh, but the good thing is that it's interactable. So if I was, want now to move the seat back and forward, uh, that's possible because it's real-time 3D. Um, so yeah, so this is like still like a, a prototype uh, experiment, but we are planning to roll this uh, in the new uh, dealers of Infinity with this uh, new update. Yeah. So let's, let's just play the video a bit longer so we have... Do you have any music on the video? There's no music on oh, this Oh, crazy. <laughs> I'll sing for you guys. Yeah, of course, right now it definitely takes a uh, high tech, you know, high specification computer to run this kind of graphics. But as we all know, power is computing power is becoming more and more small. So eventually we'll, we'll manage to get this kind of quality on our iPhones or Android devices within a couple of exactly. years. Yeah. So this is another example um, that we were allowed to show. Um, a company like Infinity, they spend a lot of money trying to figure out what is the best way to design a vehicle before they go into production. Traditionally, the way this, the way this is done is they build a physical mock-up of a vehicle. They sit people inside who fit the demographic. Um, and, but, you know, of course, there's restrictions with this. You have someone sitting down in front of a mock-up vehicle. And, you know, let's say I were sitting here and they ask you, you know, Imagine this dashboard now blue, now red, now whatever, brown. Which one would you like more? Um, so you don't know if people are telling the truth. You, don't, you know, you're very restricted because shipping this physical product is quite difficult worldwide. So we came up with a VR experience that can be used in multiple countries, multiple languages. We partner up with a company doing um, neural marketing where they monitor your brain waves. So they claim, I'm just kidding, they're amazing. Um, and then we compare results. What we're doing here, actually, you're better at explaining the technical side. Yeah, so this is uh, a prototype where, where basically we combine the eye tracking. So we are using a glass uh, that is uh, plugged in the HTC Vive. And you can see this red cube moving on the steering wheel uh, and now the speedometer, etc. So this represents the eye tracking. So we are tracking the eye position of the user uh, over a session of time. Uh, we are also measuring, at the same time, the brain waves' um, emotional uh, values. And uh, so from the interior, the exterior, so we record everything over time. 
And then afterwards, we cross combine uh, all the data together. So here, basically, okay, so we can right move now, the, the right now, the 3D model we use is, is not the final 3D model. Of course, the quality, as you saw previously, can be done much better. Right now, it's still in the experimental side. Uh, but you will see more and more of this happening in multiple industries. Um, the, the automotive is one of the obvious ones, because wherever you can save costs with these kind of tools, then you, know, you can really justify it to the CFO or the financial person on why they should invest in these kind of tools. And more importantly, the metrics that we're collecting behind. Um, is there a way to fast forward the video? Mm, I don't know how. Let me just show it to you here. But basically, yeah, so here we can see those um, to, analytics. Play, uh, play the, play the screen. Know, cannot, OK. Yeah. So this is, what, this is what, after the person has finished the experience, we have their name, we know their gender, what not, and that's what they see. Every time that they spend seconds and milliseconds tracking certain part of the vehicle, we track that. And the more time they spend looking at one area, we can then generate a heat map uh, based on the, the you know, vis visual patterns during the whole experience. Yeah, and then the idea afterwards is to cross this uh, heat map of the eye tracking with the uh, brainwave data and have a, a more uh, accurate values of uh, what actually the user are interested in and uh, what emotions, emotions it generates at the same time. Um, yeah, and so um, this is a partnership we did with a company called Johann Kungst in Munich. They are amazing at doing uh, cutaway physical engines. So companies like Audi, they would give them the e-tron, is it? The yes, e-tron vehicle. E -tron engine. And they basically put the whole engine apart, they cut it, and they help you visualize how the mechanics of, thing, of these things work on, on the inside. And we're basically, once again, using uh, Bufourier's model targets um, to then create tools that can help people visualize things that sometimes are invisible to the naked eye. Um, and of course, this is not only used for marketing, but they're already using it for training inside their workshop so that they can train people on how to better repair or do maintenance on these engines without having you know, to, to have someone you know, chop their finger off or, or in the best case scenario. Um, so yeah, here you can see, this is like a demonstration of uh, different possibilities we can do. So, so here we can do highlights of different parts. We can take the engine apart, like explode it, have an exploded view. We can uh, visualize also the, the vehicle. So what kind of engine it is, actually this is a Kawasaki engine and it fits here in this vehicle. So you could imagine the, the applications here to visualize uh, mechanical complex parts, where does it sit in the vehicle? And uh, we have like X-ray function, etc. And this is all possible again with Vuforia model target tracking. Uh, so you can see even uh, some of the parts of the physical engine are moving. Uh, all those parts are highly reflective. Uh, so this this is uh, quite complex to track, and it, it works really quite well. And if you don't have the engine, we also have an AR kit. Um, way to visualize it. So here, I can basically place the engine over there and have similar experience where I can have the annotations around. I can highlight the different parts. I can see an X-ray of all the moving uh, pistons inside. I can explode it. I can see the vehicle as well here. Let me go from here. Yeah, exactly. So I can see the engine with the motorbike. So once again, cross-combining different technologies together. Um, yeah, so every single presentation we've been to, people go over time. We want to make sure we left it really short so you guys could go and enjoy some coffee or tea or if you had any questions. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope. Thank you. Feel free if you have uh, any questions. Yeah, so if you have any questions, have a bit of time. feel free to shout them out. Um, Fran is single, in case anyone is interested. Here. Yes? Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask again about the name of the company that you worked with in order to make the AR possible on the, the, the one that you just demonstrated. Yeah, yeah. so it's uh, Vuforia. That's the name of the SDK. And it belongs to PTC. And those two guys are here. So you can ask uh, more details about it. And they have, they have a stand downstairs in the automotive side. Um, they're very kind people. They're very cool. You should really speak to them. Very friendly. <laughs> yeah. Thank you.
That's it. Well, anyway, you've got our emails. Any questions? Thank you very much. Hope to see you soon. And don't hesitate to visit our websites. Most of what you saw is uh, actually available online.